Hi YouTube, today we're going to be uh, discussing about installation for OpenSeps. We're going to be using an uh, Ubuntu 10.04 server as the base for this, so we're going to go through the uh, different installation steps. Uh, first off, we're going to start installing some um, default packages uh, that we need for the uh, correct compilation for the server. I'm going to include this within the uh, instructions for the video. I'm going to be pausing the um, um, recording while the files are downloaded because I don't want to have uh, keep you waiting so I'm just gonna uh, pause the video a couple times while we wait for the downloads to complete okay so have uh, we have installed those initial uh, set of libraries um, I'm just gonna go th uh, quickly through what we install we installed uh, libc and uh, c++ and um, g++ and some other uh, dependencies that are required for the built essentials package and then uh, open SSL in case you want to enable SSL and uh, some other uh, development libraries so let me go ahead and uh, uh, put some more that are going to be required as well and uh, I'm just going to pause the recording for another second okay so um, we're done with that um, other set of dependencies. Uh, last we're going to install is uh, MySQL server and the development libraries. Um, MySQL is usually the most commonly used um, database that is um, deployed with OpenZips for account creation and CDR records. You can integrate it with some other uh, background um, databases as well but um, for the purpose of this installation I'm just gonna go ahead and install uh, MySQL server okay at this point I'm just gonna give the um, password for MySQL so the installation can carry on we should be all set here in just a minute uh, with the prerequisites Okay, so now that we have completed the prerequisite, I'm gonna go under um, user source uh, to continue with the rest of the initial process. Uh, we're gonna get the latest version of OpenSys, which is a uh, 180 beta uh, from their uh, website. Should be downloaded here in just a minute. Okay, so I, I uh, just download the code. So let me go ahead and. Uh, Extract it so we can uh, compile it. Okay, so um, usually you'll go two ways from here. You can either modify the make file to include and remove some specific modules, so you can go uh, with defaults for the purpose of this uh, installation. I'll just go ahead and do a make all to build uh, the default modules but you can tune the modules you want to build uh, during compilation time. I'm going to have a follow up video uh, specifying those modules and uh, a little bit more tuning for the installation. Okay so the code uh, has compiled as you can see there's been no major errors or anything so we can um, move ahead. Uh, I'm going to do a make install try now to uh, deployed all the code that has been compiled. Okay, so moving from here, there's a couple of things that we need to kind of take care of. I want to create a directory under bar run. Um, for the run file for open zips uh, to be allocated. Um, now we want to go under uh, the source code that we just downloaded to look at some of the default packages um, packaging files that come from here uh, there's a OpenSips default file and OpenSips in it that will interest us so we're gonna copy the um, OpenSips defaults to um, etc default um, and then we're gonna copy as well the um, init file to etc init so we can have the script um, taken care of as well. Um, 
we're now gonna add um, execution permissions to OpenZip script and um, we're gonna add uh, OpenZip user for the software to run and we're gonna uh, include the OpenZip service um, to be executed up startup this is only in case you want OpenZip to start automatically on your server but it's very useful in instances where you might need to reboot the server at the box and you want uh, OpenZip to uh, start automatically now we need to do uh, some modifications to these files that we just copied so I'm gonna start with a default file uh, this one of the very common pitfalls that I see um, people running into when install OpenZip you wanna change this uh, flag for open uh, run OpenSips to yes and you might want to increase the um, uh, memory allocation to uh, 128 is usually the recommended if you want to run OpenSips as a different user and group uh, you can certainly do so but with the user that we just created previously we should be okay <coughs> uh, we save the file we exit those changes and then we want to make uh, some changes to the um, uh, the next I need this script uh, the reason being is the default script doesn't contain the location for the um, OpenZip binary so you might wanna find where the OpenZip binary is located within your system It's usually under local sbin and that's what you want to uh, specify under the um, OpenZip script uh, so when you look at the uh, daemon section here usually you want to change this to let me go into insert mode first and um, you want to change to user local as been and you want to modify this run open sips to yes as well okay uh, let me um, exit out of that as well uh, we already give execu uh, execution permissions to the script um, so we should be good to go now let's try it so the first thing is if I run the I need the script for open sips and if I try to start it uh, you should see some messages about the URLs that is trying to bind it and the aliases that are created. Um, you're not expected to see much more output than that. Um, how to tell if it's actually running after that? Well, you can do a PS aux and you can see that we have some OpenZip instances that they were actually started and uh, remain in memory. And we can do like uh, netstat minus ALN uh, P and this will tell us that you have OpenZips running and listening on port 5060 on the um, uh, 127001 now you will need to um, modify the uh, um, OpenZips default uh, configuration script but I'm gonna have a follow-up video on how to go about modifying uh, the configuration script to include some modules to specify the address that you're binding and there's another section uh, we're gonna have regarding creating the database um, within MySQL so you can add all the different user accounts and um, some other modules that rely on the database like CDR and billing and some others because in case you need to specify uh, or you wanna load the MySQL module uh, you need to do all that configuration. OpenZip brings some tools to create a database and uh, there's some work that you need to do prior to that but this will get the uh, basic OpenZip installed and able to run successfully within the system. The rest is really tune-up that will vary on your specific scenario. So I hope this has been informative and uh, thank you for watching.